Okay. All right. Um, so I see it's a small group, what is great because we can actually talk, we can have a conversation. So if you guys have questions as we are going, you know, just kind of give me the signal so I can stop and I can see if I can help you out at the moment. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about strategies to support your bilingual child. Uh, we have different reasons why we want our child to speak. In this case, can be Spanish or can be any other language. I know some of you has to do is our mother language. You know, for me, Spanish is my first language. Uh, and I want everybody to know the language. For you, it could be uh, just your heritage language. Uh, maybe you do speak Spanish at home, but you don't know how to help your child. So we are gonna talk about those two things too. Uh, let's see here. Okay, very go. I'm stuck in the slide. Very go. Uh, today we're gonna talk about family language plan. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that term. If no, I will explain a little bit about that. We will also talk about the language process, how we acquire language. So in that way we know exactly how to help the kids in every stage. And then we will just go to questions, okay? So I'm gonna pass this. Um, what is your family plan? Let's start with that one. And when I say family plan, it's like, a, do you have a goal as a family that your child is gonna speak Spanish by then of, let's say elementary school or by high school? What is your plan? What do you guys have talk in your house that you would like to do? You know, and I think that's a good question that sometimes we don't ask ourselves, especially when we speak the language, we assume they're gonna acquire, um, but it's very important to know exactly in what direction you're going, because if you know what is your goal, you know the steps that you need to take. Okay, that's kind of more the specific part. Now, they are a um, couple things that people is gonna tell you, like a one, maybe my child goes to immersion school. So you send a child to a school that maybe they do a half a day in Spanish, a half a day in English. Okay, that's the family plan, that's great. Some people do mom speak Spanish and dad speak English at home. So they keep to the language, they stick to the language. Some families do that. Other families do no, just a uh, place and, and time, time and place. And what they do is like a no, just when we're gonna have dinner, we speak Spanish. That's the only time we speak Spanish during the day. That is okay. Whatever you decide, it has to be what works for your family. This is kind of the same thing that homeschool. Some kids, you can do homeschool with them. Other kids, you just can't. And that's fine because every child is different. So when you decide to do this, you have to figure out what are we gonna do as a family? Some people do special activities. Just when they are watching TV, they only watch TV in Spanish. Okay, that's their strategy, that's fine. Some people do not just when we do reading. So you have to figure out what works for the dynamic of your family. Um, and the other one is minority language at home. Some people speak only Spanish at home. And then when they go out into society, they speak English like normal. But every time when they're home, they speak the minority language. That's a strategy too. Uh, do anybody has a question before I go to the next steps? No? All right, I'll move on. Okay, there are three ingredients that you need for anybody that wants to learn any, any language. One is input. You have to put, you have to provide the child with the uh, input with information in the target language. The second one is opportunities. You'd have to provide the child with opportunities to practice the language. And the next one is you have to make it real. Uh, if you don't make the Spanish or whatever in the language, I'm gonna refer more in Spanish for this workshop, but honestly, any language. 
if you don't uh, make it real, the child is not gonna learn this thing because learning a language is a lot of work. Wow. So it has to be meaningful for them. All right, so just a quote, knowledge of languages is a doorway to wisdom. In the survey that I sent, there was some people, they said the kids are learning like at their third language right now. So that's kind of interesting and it's good. We want the kids to learn the most languages they can. But at the same time, we want to figure out what do we want. We want them to be proficient in the second language or we want them to have just a knowledge of the language. So that's something also to think. So we're going to go to the process how we acquire language. This is for kids so far, or for adults, anybody, how anybody do it. Most of what we acquire about language is through listening. Um, according to the latest research about the brain, a one month old baby start acquiring language, especially the sounds. And if they're at home, they speak two languages, he, can, he or she can figure it out what, how the sounds the languages are gonna make. So what I think is amazing. So, so that tell us, yeah, that's like so that tell us that we need to talk to our kids. We need to have a lot of conversation, especially if you guys have any of you have babies, talk to them. If you speak in Spanish, talk to them in Spanish. Maybe they don't answer to you. Maybe they just look at you or whatever, but keep talking to them. Talking has a lot of impact in the language acquisition. Music, music has a big impact. If um, play music in Spanish or in the language that you are targeting. And I will say this, uh, this is a very good strategy for any age level. Now, if you have older kids, that's a different thing. Uh, put the music in the house. At least they're listening to the music in Spanish. Have them sometimes, um, you know, when the kids like to color or they like to paint or do art. Okay, put a little bit of background music in Spanish there when they are doing those activities. Because for the older kids, they don't want to know, like they don't want to be seen and know this is what you need to do right now in Spanish. Oh, for them, that's punishment. And they go like, I don't really want to learn Spanish. Everybody knows English. What do you want me to learn the language? So then you don't want to fight with your child. So make the music something enjoyable. You know, it can be a routine in the house. We, buy, we dance to this song. Okay, it's the fun time to dance to this song. Or things like that, they make it fun and they make it, uh, it's a memory for them. Audiobooks are really, really good for younger kids and older kids uh, to listen to them. Um, there are so many companies right now, they have a lot of them. So that's a good strategy to have with the kids. Now, uh, let them listen to stories kind of balance the listening with the reading. Read alouds. Read alouds will never get old. Doesn't matter the age of your child. Um, if they're younger, read aloud in Spanish, read aloud in English at home. Do those things because those things help them with the language acquisition. If they're older, read the chapter book as a family. You know, one night mom can read one chapter, the next uh, night, maybe the child can read the chapter. You know, and I'm talking um, for older kids, you have a lot of options. Like at the Magic Tree House, you can read, I mean, those higher kids, if they want to read Harry Potter or any of those books, but read aloud, read aloud. You have to understand that most of the vocabulary that a child will acquire is through reading. So that's why reading is so important. Now we do have TV right now, Netflix, we know there is a lot of TV shows in Spanish, you can switch the language, uh, a lot of apps, a lot of games. So resources are available to cover the listening. Sometimes with older kids, they don't wanna watch TV in Spanish, okay? Maybe the movie. Disney movie, they just want to watch the whole movie in, in English because it's easier. The brain don't have to do too much thinking. 
but maybe you can have a rule in the house. Okay, you can watch something in TV five minutes, any TV show in Spanish, and then you go to the TV show that you wanna watch in English. So do two minutes or something, do a little bit. The idea is for your child to love the language, not to hate the language, okay? Speaking. If you speak the language, you are the most powerful person in your house passing the language to your child. Speak to them in Spanish. I know it gets really hard because when you speak English, it's so much easier. And every kid, every child knows the language. Make the effort. Make the effort to speak to them in Spanish. Small things. Maybe they'll get frustrated at the beginning, but then they're going to get used to uh, speak the language at home. Uh, friends, get together with friends that speak the language. If you get together on a, a play day with the kids and it's a family that also speak Spanish, speak Spanish between you. So the kids will listen what you're saying and also the kids will also pick up in a couple of words. If kids don't see you using the language, they're not gonna understand there is a value to using the language. Um, and sometimes that's hard because especially when we live here, we do everything in English and it's so much easier. So you have to put the extra effort there. If you have the opportunity, yeah, go ahead. There's a question in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. What if my... What if family isn't helpful? That's my main problem. That's my, yeah. And that is true. Um, that, that's, a big, that's a big thing. Um, if your family isn't helpful, what you have to do, this is kind of going back. If you have a family plan and you say, when we are together with family that speak Spanish, we're gonna speak Spanish. In some way you kind of wanna say that's your rule. So people's gonna get used to your rule. They're not gonna like it at the beginning. But then they're gonna get used to, oh, okay, Gisela and her family, they're just gonna speak in Spanish. And it's gonna be okay and they get used to, and then they start doing it. But that's when, and, and you tell them why, because I want my kids to be fully bilingual, you know? So when you explain to them the reason why you wanna, you made the decision as a family, family, if they speak Spanish, they will follow along. You know, so you just kind of have to have, tell them clearly, this is what the reason why we're doing this. Um, do you have? May, may I add, it was, it was my question. It's Francesca. Okay, um, go ahead. So I've been, we've, my son and I have been back living with my parents for about a year now, mm -hmm. and it is a battle. They're not even fluent English speakers. So they try to just talk to him in broken English because they claim that he doesn't understand them otherwise. Mm -hmm. But I want to be able, like, what do I need to tell them to get it through their head that I really want my son to learn, but they're not being helpful. You know, I just, I would much rather, yep. I don't know. It's like, I can't get it through their head. <laughs> like, they, like, you know, if you're, if you're fluent in Spanish, like, please help me because I really want him to learn. And they'll do it for maybe a second and then it'll just go right back to however words they know to try and communicate with him. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. Um, yes. I think you're going to have to tell them you want your child to be truly bilingual. Mm -hmm. And you know that he's living in the U.S. and eventually he, English is going to come easily to him. But right now, he, you have the opportunity, I mean, the, your parents have the opportunity to help the grandson or granddaughter. I'm sorry, I didn't capture it was a boy or girl. It was a boy, it's a, he's a boy. It's a boy. So it capture, you know, it will really help your child in his future. Because if I'm honest with you guys, this is the thing that kind of moves me. And to me, this is very personal. Kids are not gonna make it if they don't know at least two or three languages in the future. I mean, sadly, this is what is happening right now. Uh, we are gonna grow up in a generation the kids are gonna have, most of them, they're gonna have a college degree. They're gonna have so many things they need, but it's gonna be one more in the pile. What is gonna make it the difference is how many languages can you speak? 
And that's how they're gonna get eventually a job in the future. So that's kind of the main reason. And just tell your parents, I want my child to be proficient in Spanish. If he is proficient in Spanish, he's gonna have more opportunities for his future. So right now, help me and work with him so he can be successful in the future. And it's gonna be thanks to them because they speak Spanish, they know the language. Um, so have that conversation. If not, I'll give you my email at the end of the presentation and you can uh, feel free to email me. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, now, if you guys travel, um, you know, give some privilege to the Spanish speaking countries. So if a child see the other people speak the language, they'll eventually will, you know, practice it. They will be forced to be honest. And that's one of the best way to use the language when you're forced to do something, you have to do it. Um, classes, there is a lot of classes today. There is a lot of online stuff that kids can take um, out of school. I know they do a lot of things. Uh, you can join a book club or do different things um, according to their age level. Uh, we have a question here. Go ahead, Le Leilani. Hi, sorry. Yeah, hold on. Let me put the thing on. Is it? Yeah, I was just saying, I guess, the same thing about that. So um, with family and whatnot, not um, helping. So um, I'm Mexican and Italian. My husband is Italian and Chilean. So este, um, it's, it's hard because... For example, like, well, the, and you were saying right now, the whole thing about traveling is that my daughter, like we speak to her in the three languages. And so, um, but Italian for me, it's, I'm not as, as like fluent as I am in Spanish. So it's harder for me to like, cause also I, I know like Italian and then I know the dialect from where my dad is from in Italy. So it's confusing for me sometimes. So I try to like, just let it, um, I try to like speak as much Italian as I can to my daughter, but um, the thing that helped for us was, yeah, we went to Italy and stuff when she was a lot younger, but um, she, I get like kind of a, like hesitance from her. Like, even though she understands it, she'd be like, I, I don't, I don't want to speak Espanol. I want to speak like, hello, you know, and so like, which is English, you know, and so it's harder for me to be like, you know, so what I, what I told her is that I tell her, I said, well, you know, when we go to Mexico and you speak to your friends over there, like, you know, um, like, don't you like it that they understand you, that you're able to like talk to them? And so she's like, yeah, that's true, whatever. But yeah, so it's kind of like, I'm, I'm kind of getting in that same thing that um, I guess with the Spanish, I could work with it, but I'm wondering how to do it with the Italian because my husband is like fluent in Italian. He was raised in, um, born in Chile, but raised in Italy. And so like his Italian is great. Um, and he tells me that it's harder for him to speak to her and to speak to me in Italian, even though I ask him to, because it's just easier to speak in Spanish or English. And so, um, well, this is the thing and it gets, and I'm sorry if I'm going to be too honest. Um, yes, I'm totally agree. It's so hard to do that, but that's the moment that you have to decide as a parent, what do I want for my child? So oh. in that moment, it's like, I know it's hard for him, but he's going to have to kind of get over the thinking, like change the soundtrack and think I'm doing this hard thing for my daughter, you know, so and use the language because when you know the language, in this case, your husband knows the language. He's a fluent speaker of the Italian. So in some way, he need to pass that through your daughter. It will be less painful for her then have your daughter ha be 14, 15 and start learning Italian. Right, because that's what I told, I, I, I talked to her about that because she like, she'll accept like speaking Spanish or whatever, like to the point where, because I'm like, it's very important, you know, like, and I speak to her a lot in Spanish. So like I go out and I'm like, like Spanglish or I, you know, or I'll, I'll do it. So that way, like she understands and she can, you know, just the way that I've always done it. That's just how I am. Um, but with the with the Italian, like I told her, I said, you know, for me, it was hard because when I was younger and I went to Italy with my dad, it would be a sink or swim situation. And I don't want you to go through that. Like, I don't want you to have to sit there and feel like inadequate, you know, when it's not even your fault, you know, well, and so. 
what you can try, you can try and you can say, okay, you and dad can speak in Italian. That's kind of the bound that you and dad have. That's the thing that you guys do. So mm -hmm. I'll speak Spanish to you and you speak Italian with that. So learn from that, you know? So in that way, uh, it will be kind of like a, the cool thing that I do with my dad. Mm -hmm. that we can speak this language together. Um, but it's gonna take some time. Don't also don't think it's gonna have um it's gonna happen one day. And also you have to be very persistent. Yeah. Very yeah, very that's that's the thing that I because then that's the like with his family, like when I first well, even initially, even now, like they're when when they're with together, they all speak Italian to each other. And yeah. I always thought that was great because that way I can, you know, like I mean I would sit there and I would speak whenever I could like I felt confident enough to say. And if not, I would answer or say something, let's say it in Spanish or whatever. But but yeah, I mean it's just kind of like stressing the importance of of learning, you know, and I want her to like, I mean, that's our, that's our goal. So I guess it's just sort of like, I tell her, I'm like, I tell him, I said, you have to like, get that away from yourself, you know, get that fear away and just, you know, if she doesn't want to, well then yeah, like, you know, you want to put a movie on and we tell her we will put the movie on in Italian or in Spanish. And we tell her like, you know, you have to watch it in this. And if not, well then sorry. Entonces, like, yeah. And yeah, but keep going uh keep going and be persistent and that's a hard one i'll be honest with you when it comes to language for all of us that's a very hard thing but you can do it so okay. you have to tell yourself we can do this we can do this that's what is go back go to your family plan because your family plan really is kind of your goal so this is our goal okay we got south track and that's a normal thing but then we have to be back on track so mm -hmm. keep persistent there uh, the other thing uh, is very important. So after we listen to a lot of things as humans and we start understanding the language, we can read. So that's what you're going to see. The kids are going to be able to read. Now, in Spanish, it's so much easier to learn to read than English. Okay? Yeah. Uh, just because how the language works and the sounds. Now, one of the things, have a lot of books in Spanish around your house. If you don't have books in Spanish around your house, don't ask your kids to read in Spanish. Because if they don't see it, they're just going to pick up books in English because it's so much easier for them. Right. So no, yeah. And the music, too, what you were saying, too, about the music. Yeah. Like, yeah, like we tell her, like, yeah, so we listen to all kinds of music. And so she's like, she loves Maniskin. And so she's like, oh, mama mia, mama mia. So, like, yep. so like okay. there you go, that you one. know, like. So yeah. yeah, it's kind of, yeah, like you said, persistence. All right, thank you. No problem. <laughs> then also, um, Mayra, I know you have a question. Give me my, one second, I'm gonna finish this and I'll get back to you. Um, bilingual book, if they're younger, they're excellent. And I'll be honest with you, bilingual book are good for any grade, but then when they get between the eight now, you know, eight, nine years old, if they see a bilingual book, they're gonna read just the English part because it's so much easier. And then mm -hmm. not gonna read the Spanish part. So make sure that as the kids get older, you have truly books in Spanish available for them to read. Mm -hmm. So then they don't have the excuse that I don't have anything to read in Spanish. There is nothing in Spanish, you know? So they can do that. Uh, set the reading time. Maybe you can say every day you have to read one book in Spanish, a picture book. Yeah. So let's say every day we're reading a book. If your child is reading by themselves, you know, they're in the age, the seven, eight, and they're independent readers, have, tell them. You can read all your books you want, but you have to read one in Spanish. Okay? Yeah. Uh, then resources according to the age level. Sometimes we make the mistake and buy... Uh, resources in Spanish very um, for young learners and we pretend the older kids to read them just because they're in Spanish. So we also have to be conscious about that. A child wants to read something according to their age and if they don't want to read something that's not to baby. Uh, websites, there is a lot of websites with information. Um, the website where I have the magazine we post every week, we are posting between two or three articles for kids to read. So if your child is reading independent, they can go there. There is a lot of 
stuff that we are putting there for free for anybody to read. Okay, Mayra, I know you have a question. Hi. So um, my question, I actually had one related to reading as well, but I could save it for later. Um, but it's going back to making a family plan. So I already decided we're going to make our family plan to be dinner time where we all speak in Spanish. I speak fluently in Spanish. My husband does not, but he learned Spanish in school and he actually speaks very well, but the accent is off. So, but my question to you is, um, cause there's, I've seen people say like, when you're practicing, like when you're talking Spanish, like if someone makes a mistake, do you correct it? Or do you just keep going with it kind of a thing? Cause sometimes my husband will say something the wrong way. And then I hear, oh, you're just supposed to like, you know how, like when you're a child, you know, like when they make a mistake, like, how do you do you um, make a big deal about correcting or you just like repeat it in the right way and just go with the flow, you know, kind of a thing. Okay. The first technique is normally you repeat what they say. Yeah. In the correct way. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to put a small sample. Like my kids in my classroom, they say, yo sabo español. Mm. Okay. That's what they keep talking the whole time. So I said, oh, yo sé español. Mm -hmm. And we keep talking and I don't say anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I can do that sometimes and I have done that so much in my classroom that now they figured it out that's wrong. Okay, mm -hmm. it took me a while. So there are other times they make mistake and I point them to them. Mm -hmm. So you have to also with your husband, you have to be kind because if you correct everything he says, yeah, he's not, not going to want to talk. <laughs> yeah. Or it just doesn't look good. Right. I don't want yes. to be like, oh, there's mommy yelling at daddy again about her Spanish. You better yep. not mess up our Spanish or she'll be yelling at exactly. us. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to kind of pick your battle like a, something that he said is like, a, OK, it's not that bad. We got the message. We mm -hmm. know what he's trying to say. We're good. But if it's something really like, a, uh, what is this thing they keep? Uh, okay. Uh, when people want to say in English, I'm so embarrassed about something that, you know, in oh, Spanish, embarrassada. Embarrassada. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of a big mistake. So yes, you want to correct that one. Yes. Okay. But at the end of the day, what you have to understand about languages, our goal is to communicate. Mm hmm so if your husband is communicating and everybody's getting the message, don't correct him. Okay, got it. Kinda That's say that all. Maybe you can mention something, but don't do it. Just let it go. Just let it go. That's why I'm like, mm, maybe I'm gonna let it go. Yeah, because yeah. I don't. Otherwise, it's gonna be you like. You know, constantly. it's gonna be family time. You know, dinner time is gonna be a fight every day. Yeah. So nobody wants to go to that dinner. You know what I mean? To a contentious dinner when they just yes. want to enjoy their dinner. Yeah, I yeah. get it. <laughs> so let them enjoy and, and even for kids to pick up what you want to correct mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're gonna get right now to writing is the same thing don't correct the whole sentence pick up one word and i have a question about reading but i don't want to take well, too much go time ahead. No, I, go ahead. okay my other question is so you're oh my god so i teach my kids phonics my oldest is going to be eight next month he knows his english phonics my five-year-old is learning his english phonics Spanish phonics so much easier so I've been kind of doing it a little bit with the kids but then I was like they don't really they don't speak Spanish besides like asking for leche or like you know a popote how I say it the strong mm -hmm. everyone says it differently so I don't know whether to put more emphasis on just conversational like everyday Spanish or to set aside time for them in parallel to also learn the phonics so that they can read in Spanish because then if they learn it to read doesn't mean they'll understand what the words mean because they they don't speak it yet right so okay. to me I'm like how old are they kids my so let's say eight and five okay the thing with the Spanish is it's easier exactly what you're saying it's so much easier to learn so go right now focus in the phonics get the mm -hmm. part out of the way get them reading sentences, reading word. But what you can do too, there is a TV show on YouTube called Cantando Aprendo a Hablar. And I, I just wrote it down because I can send you the link guys, especially for the younger kids. Have them watch those YouTube videos because they teach every letter, every consonant. And it's done by a phonoaudiologist. 
So it's really the pure thing and they're capturing the sounds. Okay. And also the music, because what you want is you want your child to have enough sounds in their head in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Honestly, they don't know how to use them yet, but the sounds are safe in their brain. So then when you go and start teaching them the phonics, they're going to pick it up so quickly. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they have those sounds. Yeah, they did. I mean, even so, I don't know if it's the same one, but we watched a video where it was like this monkey. Mm -hmm. It was a monkey that was going, you know, doing all the, sorry. My kids, <laughs> but um, but yeah, but they were even from that they were able to catch it and read yeah. words, but they didn't know what the words meant, right? Yeah. And, that's, and okay. that's the process. That's the process. Yep. Yeah. At least if they got if they got the sounds, the reading, and the vocabulary is gonna come later. Yeah. Okay. One thing at a time. Yeah. Okay. How okay. <laughs> okay. The next process is writing, and this is why writing is so important in the second language because, um. When we write in the second language, we know you, you actually understand the language. Because we know that when in the second language, when you are learning, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna talk, you can have conversations. You, I, maybe you, you're gonna read, but if you are able to write, you are fully bilingual, okay? Now, in most places, what they do, uh, they will ask, kids or adults to write something. They'll just give any topic. And according to how they write is how they analyze how much language they have acquired. Okay. Now, writing is a hard one and it's not gonna happen very easily. Okay. So this is one takes a long process. What you can do, maybe you can get pen pals with other kids, they also speak Spanish. And when you do these things, know the kids are gonna make a lot of mistakes in their writing, um, please don't correct every single thing. They make a mistake. Have them go like a pick up one thing and tell them why that thing is wrong and move on and then pick up other thing later on. But don't pick up everything at the beginning because at the beginning they're gonna make so many mistakes. And that's part of the process, that's a natural thing. Now they can write to family if family is overseas, you know, the old fashioned letter or maybe an email, have them do that. Have them do that as an exercise. You know, maybe they can write once a week or things like that kind of, but you have to make it a routine. Make it stories. Uh, if they're younger, have them draw the thing and make the bubbles and they make a story and something happened and I said, okay, what if we try this week and let's do one story in Spanish. The same thing that you're doing homeschool in your curriculum. Choose one of the, the things to do in Spanish. What if we do the research paper this week in Spanish? It's gonna be a battle. It's gonna be a fight at the beginning. But as soon as they know that once a week they have to do one project in Spanish, they're gonna get used to the routine. Uh, journaling is so good for kids to have a journal. A journal, they can write their thought, they can write the ideas they have, a list of books they wanna read or different things, but have them to have a journal and encourage them to in the journal to write in Spanish and just tell them nobody's gonna check your journal. So even if you write kind of Spanglish, that's okay. But just start doing it because the, this thing is like an exercise that kids need to get moving and doing. And the same thing goes back, we have to be persistent. So we have to do these activities all the time, not just one week. Uh, submissions. I know when kids write in Spanish, like for my kids uh, at my school in fourth grade, if they write a piece, um, I try to find places where I, we can submit those the writing. Because once they see their writing on a website, on a magazine or something, oh man, they are encouraged to write for the rest of their lives because that gives them so much pride of their work they have done. Uh, if your kids are older, send me an email. We are always taking submissions at the website, things the kids write, and we kind of help them to prove some, you know, and then we put it online so at least they can have a byline and they can have something they have done because when they feel proud of what their, their work, 
that's when the language really comes to their heart. And when the process is, you acquire language, it's all in your brain, but when the language really gets to your heart, that's when it's meaningful. That's what is so important for us because this is our first language or maybe the language of our parents. So we wanna pass that to our kids. Um, anybody has a question? I do. It's Francesca again. <laughs> okay. Well, so I, my question is what to do when um, the kids, so I have a five-year-old that gets really grumpy um, and resists, right? When, for example, right now we're part of a co-op and we're trying to integrate Spanish for at least half an hour during like a Zoom social hour. And it is a fight to the point where he doesn't even want to log on he cries and complains because according to him I don't speak no Spanish you know it makes him really angry so I'm trying to find a way to get him to like it again he used to understand it right before he started speaking I was up to 18 months before he and then we you know we had to switch because dad only spoke in English he would only answer in English and at that point I just felt it would be easier um, and so now I want him to learn to, to like it, or I don't know, it's just such a fight. I just don't know what to do um, to who is the other connection for the Spanish. It would be my parents who I live with, who I fight over, <laughs> who won't help me right now. Um, but, um, we do have Spanish speakers in the co-op, but we don't see each other very often. Um, you know, there's a lot it's via zoom. So like something, so it's only me th during the week, you know, maybe once a week it's, you know, park day with our co-op kids, but during the whole week, it's literally, it's just me. Okay. You're going to have to talk with your parents. And really get them uh, on board then. Yes. Because if you get the parents on board, because right now for your son, Spanish doesn't have, there is no reason why I'm going to learn this. This is more mm -hmm. thinking for him and yes. it's any child is work. So no child wants to work. That's just the rule. So right now you're going to have to get your parents on board because if they see, he sees at home, he's going to have to do it. He's going to have mm. to start speaking and then he's going to see the value. Right now in his mind, this doesn't have any value. I don't want to learn something that only my mom speaks sometimes. You know what Got I mean? Got it, yes. You have to make it real for him. If it's not real, this is not going to happen. And that's such a good point. Okay. I'm going to have that talk with my parents this weekend. Yeah. You're going to yeah. have to get them on board. Um, okay. Can I add something to that too about the same yeah. thing with my in-laws with um, a sort of similar, I guess, but I don't know with like what Francesca was saying is that my in-laws, they speak both Italian and Spanish. Their English is not great. So my daughter, she also has <laughs> Same thing, like resistance to like, no, I don't want Espanol, I want English or whatever. Cause it, yeah, like it makes sense. Yeah, like it's easier. It's but easy. um, she actually knows that when she goes to see my in-laws that she has, she you could see that she forces herself to mm -hmm. like speak Spanish. And so, and it, it's it's like amazing to see that. So yeah, I think that that would be, that, that that's an amazing like, you know, thing that if, if they're on board with it, you know, or to get them like to be like, hey, you know, wouldn't you want to hear your grandson speak in your native tongue or whatever? And then, you know, as a group effort, then yeah. Cause my in-laws, like I said, they don't speak a lot of English and, um, and then, yeah, also, like that, it's just, it's just a way to like, kind of, yeah, like force them yeah. to, to do it and yeah. And, and really, guys, you have to get, if your kids are younger, you have to get them on board now because there is going to be a time. Kids get between the nine, 10 years old. Spanish is not cool anymore. Spanish is just is not cool, really. And they tell you, why I'm going to learn this thing? This is not cool. Everybody in this country speak English. Why do you want me to speak Spanish? And really, they go, they struggle. So if they have to go to grandparents, they're forced to use it because that's the language they speak there. So then when you get at that age, you have to create opportunities where they're forced to use the language. You have to go to Mexico where everybody speaks the language, so they're gonna use it. So if you get them on board right now, they're younger, you will have less trouble when they get older because it's gonna be a natural thing for them. 
Do anybody else has a question? I don't have a question, but I have a comment. It's, Go for it. And then I think, you know, when I was younger too, it's like, like you said, like speaking Spanish, so not cool. We speak English. Yeah. That's what, you know, but yeah, even nowadays, like little kids are like, I don't want to speak Spanish or whatever. Um, so I found that a lot of positive reinforcement, like, I know everyone says, oh, positive reinforcement, but I like legit lay it on thick. Whenever my kids speak Spanish, I'm like, oh, mira que bonito, my baby. I, because they're still babies to me, you yeah. know, and they actually like do it more and it's easier when they're younger. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Then I think like, I can't do that when they're like nine and 10. Um, so yeah. So anyways, going back to positive reinforcement, it seems to work with my kids. I don't know if other people do that a lot. Like, oh, like you did that so nice. It's so beautiful, even when it's like messed up. The other <laughs> thing I was thinking about what Francesca okay. was saying about her parents. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it goes back to like, you were saying that they, it's frustration, right? Like they're frust, like they think it's just faster because everyone's getting frustrated because they're not communicating as fluidly. You know, like um, your parents, like they'd rather deal with the broken English than, you know what I mean? It's just like a disconnect. Yeah. And I think it's like, just have the conversation of it's okay to be frustrated and it's okay that it's going to take, you know, we're so used to like, we want everything now and get it done and fast and just be like, if it takes an extra five minutes to communicate, it's okay. You know, and it's okay that everyone's getting frustrated. Um and it's okay that, and maybe they, maybe they, I don't know. I'm just thinking, I don't know if they feel bad seeing, you know, their grandson getting frustrated with them. So maybe that's why they break down and do the English thing too. I don't so, know. I think it's them too. Do you think <laughs> But so? it just makes no sense to me because it's like, you expect us to help you, right? When we have to, I, I, I don't know. I've, I've seen it. I've watched the exchange and then it's just like, I'm going to get and I'm like, but just give it a second because if he's little, he'll figure it out how to get his point across. But I don't know. I've, I've, I've given it a few, I've watched them and she always gives in first. But when she says, no me entiende, is it like, is she, I guess the question is what the giving in, what is the motivation for her giving in versus just going with it? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Maybe it's like a patience thing. I think Who it's knows? a patience because I'm going to be yeah. honest. I speak Spanish. And when I try to speak with my husband, I lose my patience when he starts speaking Spanish. Cause it's like, he's struggling and I want to tell him something like quick. And it's just like, Oh, I'll practice the Spanish with you another time, you know, but then that time never comes. You kind of just have to fight through it. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of have a feeling it's about patience. Cause we're in such a, like, kind of a society where like, we want it now, everything, like just communicate, like everything fluid. And when it's like yes. hard I think too. Yeah. I think too, it's one of the things that even the kids need to know why they're learning Spanish, the same thing adults. Mm -hmm. So it's the purpose. Like uh, if, uh, you know, Francesca, if you talk with your parents and you tell them, this is the purpose while we're doing this, this is our goal is to help, you know, is to help uh, the grandson so he can be fluent. And, and I think maybe they will switch their thinking a little bit because they're not thinking in that way. And also we have to give them some credit, our old generation, uh, you know, some of them, they didn't have the chance to learn English and they think the best future the child can have is to know English. You know, so you kind of have to go through that thinking too. And actually right now I said, you know, if we want him to have a future, he's going to have to speak two languages because one is not going to be enough anymore. Mm -hmm. so There's yeah. a lot of thinking there and keep communicating with them and just the value. What are we doing this? And you're going to go in and maybe they're going to go in and then they're going to go back to their old way to do things. So you're just going to have to go back and talk again and it's a process learning a language is a process all right melissa um i was just gonna say that i relate to the idea that it's tough and that you have to or you want to just kind of get through like that easier social you know communication interaction because 
my parents um, were of the mentality that, you know, we should teach our children to only speak English because we're in America and we need to practice English. And so you guys are just stuck. This is what we're going to do. Um, so my personal struggle comes in with, I've explained the purpose, you know, is trying to um, recapture our culture and our language. And that's something that I also have to work through. But I think it's still difficult on my end because I'm not completely fluent. I can't get by with conversations. I, um, it's like I'm constantly playing a game of taboo, right? So I don't have the words. So I'm thinking of like five other words to describe the word that I'm trying to say. So I, I tried going to Bolivia, which is where my family is from. Um, and I noticed that was a big help. But man, I was exhausted at the end of the day. And my son was exhausted too. So we would go at like nine o'clock and check out and go into you know our English speaking Netflix and just watch that for an hour but it's it's hard for me because I'm I'm also missing words so I I, I feel like I should probably just take formal classes otherwise for my son also he's only going to get here we'll never be able to get like up here because my my language is also limited but keep reading okay all our language gets, we get it from reading. Keep reading. Read with your child picture books right now. Even in the picture books that you read, they're going to be words that you don't know. Okay, fine. Later on, you can Google them and figure out what they mean. Let it start little by little. Because the thing with vocabulary is if you, you know, in the school where they teach us, you have to learn this page of 10 words and then we'll have the spelling test or whatever. I mean, I'm sorry to tell you, the research says that's a waste of time. Because we, you don't learn those words in context, they don't mean anything to you. We just memorize them to pass the test, but we don't remember what they mean. So also use this opportunity to teach your child is, hey, mom is learning too. So we are going through this together. And eventually, sadly, he's going to, like you're saying, he or she, you know, your daughter or, or son is going to get better than you, but it's fine. You can handle that, you know? So, but go through the process together and maybe put us a goal. We're gonna read one picture book in Spanish three, three days a week and you read it with your child. You're reading the book, you're bounding with your child that that's priceless. And then also he and you are learning or she are learning Spanish. So that will be so much better. You are actually doing a lot of things that will benefit your family. Yep, and keep um, and keep it up, keep it up. Guys, this is, you're gonna be doing great for one week, then life is gonna happen, other things are gonna happen and it's just life. But then you have to make sure it's like, a, okay, we took a detour, now we have to go back and start again. And that's the fight that most families have with the language because they try that and then it's like, oh, this is not working. This is not working, so bye. 